Hi, my name is Aaron Berger. I'm a University of Nebraska Lincoln Extension Educator located in the South Panhandle, Nebraska. Today I'd like to share some thoughts with you about how I believe that swath grazing can be used, especially in the High Plains region, as a tool to reduce harvested feed costs to beef enterprises. Well, First, you may be thinking, why windrow grazing? When we think about what windrow grazing provides us the opportunity to do, is potentially significantly reduce labor, harvesting, and feeding costs. The other thing that I think really provides some value, especially as we've gone through some periods where we've experienced high fertilizer prices, is when we windrow graze, we return most of the organic matter and nutrients back to the ground that it was harvested from. And this really has significant value as we think about increasing fossil fuel prices and their effect on fertilizer prices. Really the question becomes in my mind, are we going to bring the feed to the cattle? And here's a good picture of a winter feeding situation, a tractor and a bale processor out feeding livestock. Or are we going to bring the cattle to the feed? And again, here's a picture of some cows, again swath grazing. In the, in the foreground here you can see this wire. But these two, the costs of these two pieces of equipment, the fence here in this picture, or the picture of the tractor and this bale processor, are vastly different. Now both tools can be used effectively to feed hay during the winter, but I would submit to you that I believe that the opportunity to windrow graze has some real advantages as we think about ways to reduce uh, fossil fuels and the use of equipment to the cow herd. Let's just compare the economics of potentially windrow grazing versus baling and feeding hay. And this example is going to assume a two ton per acre yield. On the left we have the windrow cost per ton, if we have a figure $12 per acre, that figures out to be $6 per ton. If we figure some fencing and labor in there as well, there's going to be around $4 a ton. And so we've got around a cost of $10 per ton to harvest and feed that hay to the cow herd. If we go over on the right side, if we go ahead and bale that feed up, store it, and then haul the bales back out to the cows, and we include the cost of labor with feeding that, we're going to look at swathing, baling, and stacking conservatively to be around $35 a ton. Now with the increase in fuel prices recently and fertilizer prices, the cost of actually harvesting that may be more than that, but we'll use $35 per ton in this example. If we go ahead and look at the cost of feeding that, we're going to add another $12 a ton. So we, on the left hand side, we've got $10 per ton versus $47 per ton to swath, bale, stack, and then haul that hay out to the cattle. So we're looking at a $37 per ton difference in harvesting and feeding that hay and windrow grazing versus harvesting that hay as bales and then feeding it out to the cows. If we figure we're feeding cows at 30 pounds per head per day, that would be equal to a savings of 56 cents per animal per day. If we're feeding 200 cows, that's $112 per day. Obviously a significant difference in the cost of feeding and using a windrow grazing system versus baling, hauling the bales off the field, and then hauling the hay back out to the cattle. The other thing that I think really is important is thinking about the value of the fertilizer that we capture if we swath graze and leave those swaths on the field versus hauling the hay off to a different location. In this example, we're going to estimate a 2 ton per acre yield again. We're going to estimate that this hay has a protein content of 10% and a phosphorus content of 0.15%. We figure the nitrogen fertilizer value. If we're figuring two tons per acre again, 4,000 pounds at 10% crude protein equals 400 pounds of protein. 400 pounds of protein divided by 6.25 converts that into pounds of nitrogen available in that two tons of feed. If we figure that we capture 35% of the nitrogen that's in that feed back on the crop ground that we harvested it from, that's worth 22 pounds of nitrogen. 22 pounds of nitrogen at 45 cents per pound of N is equal to $10 per acre that we capture back on that ground that we can use again to grow subsequent crops. Let's again look at what that does and if we calculate the value of phosphorus. If we figure that the fertilizer value of phosphorus in that two tons of forage is at 0.15 percent or six pounds of phosphorus, we're going to estimate that we capture about hundred percent that phosphorus back on the ground, assuming all the manure and urine is put back on the ground where it was harvested from. Phosphorus 
If we can get that purchased at 45 cents per pound, has a value of almost $3 total back on the ground where it was harvested from. So the nitrogen and phosphorus together at today's prices of 45 cents per pound of N and 45 cents per pound of phosphorus have a value of almost $13 per acre in, in nutrients that we capture back on the ground. This doesn't include any other nutrients or the value of organic matter as well. Why does swath grazing work? Well, it really works due to seasonal moisture patterns. And here in the southern panhandle of Nebraska, we get around almost 17 inches of precip on an annual basis. The majority of this precip comes in the months of March through September. Only around 2.8 or 3 inches come in the months of October through February. This means that we capture 80% of our annual precipitation in the months of March through September. Here's a picture of a seasonality graph of precipitation in Nebraska. Again, starting in April over here on the left hand side, we can see that we rapidly increase in our precip. We get a majority of our precip in the months of May, June, and July. It tapers off into August and September. And once we get to the first of October, the months of October through March, we relatively get a limited amount of our precip, only about 20% during that month, that six month time period.